13 Lectures on General History of China by Liu Zheng Chapter 10 The Ming Dynasty During the Ming Dynasty, 1368-1644 AD The imperial authority was consolidated and developed further. In politics, the rulers of the Ming Dynasty strengthened their dictatorship. Emperor Taizu of Ming intensified monarchical control over all aspects of government, so that no other group could gain sufficient power to overthrow him. 1. The further consolidation of imperial authority and the disadvantages of the political system Zhu Yanzhong abolished the chancellor system and led the six ministers himself. However, this strengthening of imperial authority resulted in institutional inefficiency and corruption. As a result, the seizure of power by tyrannical high officials or the eunuchs caused political collapse in the Ming Dynasty. The Ming Dynasty introduced a system whereby a cabinet had the duty of drafting the emperor's responses to the memoranda. Through this means, the emperor took charge of handling state affairs. However, the eunuchs had started to restrict the performance of Piaoni of the cabinet since Emperor Yizong of Ming, relying completely upon the advice of the eunuch. Emperor Yingzong of Ming directed and lost the Battle of Two Mu Fortress against the Mongols during his first reign. Later, with the eunuch's help, he reinstated his reign by means of a palace coup, after which the tyrannical eunuch power dominated the imperial court of the Ming dynasty. By reading memoranda and commanding ministers, the eunuchs and not the emperor handled the affairs of state and became the intermediaries between the aloof emperor and his officials with the purpose of gaining control over the officials. The emperor appointed eunuchs to manage spying institutions such as the Dong Chong, Shi Chong, and Imperial Military Secret Police. Following the execution of Chancellor Hu Wayong, d. 1380, at the beginning of the Ming Dynasty, Emperor Taizu abolished the secretariat and prohibited his successor from appointing a chancellor. The Grand Secretariat, originally a secretarial institution that assisted the emperor with administrative paperwork, was instituted. The Grand Secretariat drew its members from the Hanlin Academy. The Grand Secretary, a top-ranking, non-functional civil service post, was the head of the Grand Secretariat. Considered as part of the imperial authority in the era of Emperor Jiajing and Emperor Wanli, the Grand Secretary, for example. Yansong, 1480-1567 AD, who served in the reign of Emperor Jiajing and Zhang Zhujun. 1525-1582 A.D., who served in the reign of Emperor Wanli were influential secretaries. Nevertheless, the Secretariat was a coordinating agency and different from the Secretariat in previous dynasties. The Hanlin Academy was responsible for editing and proofreading history books and materials. In the Ming dynasties, the Hanlin Academy had the unique duty of training the qualified officials. Most of high officials ranging from the ministers, the grand secretaries, to the grand counselors were promoted from the Hanlin Academy. It was said that nobody could enter into the Hanlin except for those who had graduated as Jin Shi in the imperial examination. While nobody could enter the Grand Secretariat except the scholars in Hanlin Academy. Similar to the Hanlin Academy, 
The Zan Bureau was established to educate the crowned princes in the Ming Dynasty. In addition, there were six supervising secretaries in the central government and the imperial supervisors who were sent to each of 13 supervision districts. The administrative bureau, Tong Zheng Si, emerged in the Ming Dynasty and was responsible for submitting petitions and memoranda to the emperors. Meanwhile, the Grand Secretariat took over the duty of submitting memoranda. The important memoranda were even handed in to the emperors without the transfer by the Grand Secretariat. 2. Judicature in Ming Dynasty Emperor Taizu of Ming oversaw the compilation of the laws of Great Ming including 30 volumes which were categorized by the institutions of the six ministries. The regulations were first of all added into the code. An administrative code, the code of the Ming Dynasty, was laid out in the 15th year of the era of Emperor Xiaozong of Ming. With the development of the feudal legal system, the regulations played a more and more important role in the Ming dynasties. Emperor Taizu laid great emphasis upon the code of the Great Ming which must be intact as they were the traditional laws. Therefore, the regulations had been stipulated eventually in order to offset the loopholes in the traditional laws since Emperor Xiaozong of Ming, as the subordinate statutes at the beginning. In order to avoid the malpractice of the reign of the Yuan dynasty, Emperor Taizu applied the legal principle of utilizing cruel criminal laws and harsh punishments to achieve the social order. Despite the code of the Great Ming, the Grand Edicts was laid out as the formal legal authority by which the Emperor's summonses and edicts achieved systematic position in the Chinese legal system. Emperor Taizu expected everyone to obey his rule and was infamous for killing many people by his summonses during his purges and elimination of the historical posts. In the Hu Waiyang and Lan Yu cases, he ordered the execution of the founding members of the empire who were allegedly trying to usurp the throne. In the official documents case, all of the provincial and prefectural governors and their underlings involved were decapitated or exiled because the emperor doubted the veracity of the financial documents handed up from local governments. In addition, the Ming dynasty invented the punishment of flaying in the court, a penalty inflicted upon those who dared to criticize the emperors. More than one official suffered this cruel and shamed punishment in the Ming dynasty. The Dali Temple was the judicial institution which tried the cases on the appeal that had been heard and decided by the Ministry of Justice or the judiciaries of provincial government. The three judicial institutions of the Ming were the Dali Temple, the Ministry of Justice which was responsible for hearing the important cases and the supervision institution which had the duty of supervising the judiciary. The Ming Provincial Bureaucracy contained three divisions, the Command Division for the Military, the Administration Division for Civil Affairs, and the Punishment Division for Surveillance, without having jurisdiction over one another. These three divisions fell under the control of the central government. In the middle and later stages of the Ming Dynasty, the provincial administrations were monitored by the circuit governor, who was dispatched by the central government to avert the conflicts that might arise between the three divisions. With the development of the system of the circuit governors, 
The Administration Division and the Punishment Division evolved gradually to the subdivisions of the Circuit Governors. In addition, the Ming Central Government dispatched the Governors General to coordinate local military governance. 3. Imperial Examinations In Ming Dynasty The Imperial Examination was the major mechanism by which the central government and local governments captured the elites during the Ming eras. The Ming Imperial Examination took place every three years and had three levels. The Provincial Level Examinations, the National Level Examinations, and the Imperial Court Examinations. The imperial examination was held according to a very strict procedure. The inspectors and invigilators would close the door of the examination compound as soon as the examiners had entered. No candidate could enter or leave without permission. No materials would be allowed to be taken into the compound without first being checked by the inspectors and invigilators. The candidates in the provincial level examination would be physically searched one by one when they entered the compound. This search procedure was incorporated into the national level examination during the reign of Emperor Jiajing. The graduates of the imperial court examination were called Jin Shi and were divided into three classes. The graduates who ranked in the first class in the Imperial Court Examination were granted the title of Imperial Scholar, Jin Shi GD. The Jin Shi who ranked first overall was called Zhuang Yuan. The Jin Shi who ranked second overall was called Bang Yan. And the Jin Shi who ranked third overall was called Tan Hua. The graduates who ranked second class in the Imperial Court Examination were granted the title of Jin Shi Chu Shen, immediately after the Tan Hua. The remaining graduates in the Imperial Court Examination were named as Tong Jin Shi Chu Shen. In the Ming Dynasty, the selection of civil service officials was administered by the Ministry of Personnel and the selection of military officers was administered by the Ministry of Defense. Civil service officials would not be recruited by governments until after the selection held by the Ministry of Personnel. In general, those who graduated as Imperial Scholars, Jin Shi, were appointed to the sinecures in the central government or to the busy positions in local governments. 4. Cities and life in the Ming Dynasty By the middle of the Ming Dynasty, 1368-1644 AD, cities experienced an unprecedented boom in population and development. In the Ming Dynasty, some historic cities from the Song and Yuan dynasties regained their previous glory and prosperity. The villages and temporary markets rapidly expanded to house hundreds, thousands, and even tens of thousands of residents. A vast network of cities was formed. Among all of the newly built cities, there were not only plenty of commercial cities that functioned mainly as trade centers, but more importantly, towns that specialized in handcraft industries also emerged. During the Ming Dynasty, as in the past, rice was the major foodstuff in southern China, while wheat was popular in northern China. Thus, the sweet potato became the major supplementary food in Guangdong, Fujian, Zhejiang, and Jiangsu provinces by the end of the Ming Dynasty. While maize became the major food crop of the mountainous areas along the upper and middle reaches of Yangtze River, 
especially near the Han River mountainous areas. In the Ming Dynasty, normally 110 households were considered as a Li, an administrative unit. Among the 110 households, the top 10 populous and wealthy families were selected to be the leaders for this Li. Another 100 households would be divided into 10 Jia, and 10 leaders would be assigned to each Jia. The Li and Jia leaders were responsible for registering the amount of land and population numbers as well as for collecting taxes. <laughs>